All right, we are live for the Friday edition of the Mike and Mario show. And it's been several weeks, but nonetheless, we're here in real time and I'm excited to be back. And I definitely needed some time off myself personally, but Mario, here we are, man. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well, Mike, and you? Oh, man, I'm doing good, man. And so before we uh, went live, I was talking about how, I, well, I didn't mention this, but like literally I've been live streaming faithfully for six years straight, three to four, five times a week. And I've never took a, a prolonged period off other than a week or two here. And it's been refreshing to just unplug a little bit. You know, I can see better. I can, I can sense things better. My, my, my senses are a little, little in heightened just because I dialed back on some of the negative news. But life is still moving on, man. And here we are now. And uh, looking forward to connecting with you. Of course, I've been watching your video, so that's how I stay. That's how I stay informed. But uh, <laughs> I haven't unplugged. But uh, what I've done is I've uh, I've been playing a lot more golf and taking, mm -hmm. doing, a, getting a bit of coaching because my swing had deteriorated. So that that's kind of refreshed me as well, uh, yeah. away from a, a lot of the doom and gloom. Uh, yeah, but, um, yeah, I can understand why you'd want to do what you did yeah yeah and it's good because like, now we're i think this is maybe i went going on our third year of connecting for these live streams on fridays if i'm not mistaken so uh yeah. definitely offers a lot of value to the viewers man so for those who are plugged in definitely uh looking forward to connecting back with you guys feel free to throw out some thoughts questions ideas we'll try to jump on those towards the end and if you're here hit that thumbs up show some love for the channels and so another thing i want to mention then we got a six seven articles to get into so uh this is more of a reintroduction of uh, the Mike Mara show, but I want to encourage people to make sure you support those people that you follow and that you learn from and that you enjoy being along uh, on the journey with them. Just because I think coming up this fall, the next spring, especially the media crackdown, like there's a lot of talk about here in the US, how YouTube is going to start hiding news, alternative news so that they can maintain their narrative. So definitely make sure you stay plugged in and uh, go from there. But all right, enough ranting, man. <laughs> Let's get back into it. So the UK, uh, from what I've gathered, based upon what I watched from your videos, seems to be leading the Western world downward, <laughs> and if I can say that correctly, even though it's not something to laugh about, but I think it's a lot of stuff we can learn from what's happening. And moving the goalposts is always something we talked about when it comes to the whole CPI 2% target that they established for themselves to keep compounded inflation going. And so now they're talking about adjusting that. So uh, the very first article. Let's jump into it, man, because uh, actually it's the wrong article, but give me a second here. Uh, I got to get my get, get my stuff together. But I think this yeah. is very important because this it, 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 will UK lead the way. But advisor to UK chancellor urges uh, to rethink on B Bank of England's 2 percent CPI target. So there's a lot of rethinking these days. But uh, does this surprise you at all, to say the least? <laughs> uh, no. And uh, notice how this advisor works for JP Morgan Asset Management. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. if you read the whole thing, and you don't have to show it, I, I've read it. I, yeah. uh, she says that, oh, we've been bouncing along, uh, along uh, the zero, zero, zero bound. level, zero bound. And, and the thing is, uh, I've done videos this year and last year because the uh, Office of National Statistics was mm -hmm. told by the government to basically change the history of CPI in the UK. So from yeah. May last year, uh, the CPI, uh, for example, from 1997 to 2020, and 1997 was when the Bank of England was given independence and mm -hmm. told to follow a 2% target, right? Yeah. But in those uh, 23 years, the average CPI was 2.7, which was way above 2%. So they failed to reach that target. And 0.7 doesn't seem a lot, but over 23 years, it adds up and compounds. But right. now with the change they did last last May, <laughs> magically that uh, number has gone from 2.7 to 1.9. So now uh, they can justify this kind of talk. They say, oh, the Bank of England has kept uh, the CPI prior to, uh, you know what, in tw the beer, beer disease, right. they kept right. it below two. So they've done a good job. So we can actually keep it at three or four. And all that's going to do, of course, is uh, screw uh, the average uh, person out there because mm -hmm. we know that only the top one or 0.01% really can protect themselves 
against uh, a, a devaluing or uh, currency debasement. Yeah. So I, I'm not surprised by this, and uh, they're going to do everything they can to just uh, keep uh, fooling and cheating the public because that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, one of the things that I, uh, as I was reading through the article, uh, it talks about uh, the Bank of England policymakers have uh, strongly uh, resisted suggestions that the inflation target should be changed amid concerns that altering it at a time of soaring prices would delay further blow to its credibility. And so uh, if, what if that doesn't exactly like what credibility at this current moment, but also even the numbers that they use, you know, we all know that the st stats we get from them are all tainted and altered. So once again, they're having issues with their own numbers at this current moment because things are so problematic in the overall economy. So it doesn't surprise me one bit. But the question will be, will other central banks beyond the Bank of England begin at some point in the near yeah. future as a result of trying to cover up the c catastrophe that's happening, decide to talk about adjusting their numbers as well? Because I, stagflation I, is a major topic in the UK right now. And of course, we're nowhere near that, you know, CPI figure wise. But once again, do you think the Fed or other central banks, EU, for example, might end up wanting to talk about adjusting the numbers as well? Yeah, there, there has been talk in the U.S. about that as well early this year. About yeah. they, they, they shot that down, though. Yeah. Jerome Powell shot that down at first. Yeah, yeah but, uh, you know, they, the excuse of the proponents of this is that if you try to get to 2%, it could create quite a lot of accidents and problems. So yeah. why not keep it up to uh, three or four? So uh, I think what they might do is just uh, just change the methodology, just like they did in the 80s and 90s. Uh, we, we've seen from, you know, through the work of John Williams at Shadow Stats, that's, mm -hmm. how, that's how they solved the problem of high CPI is just to just tinker with the numbers and create like a, uh, substitution hedonics and i'm sure they're gonna they've probably done quite a bit to uh, in the us as well in, st in terms of the statistics not just in the uk yeah <laughs> so watch this so I, as you talk we're talking about the cpi figures being altered i just typed in uh you know drone pile cpi figures adjustment and let me see here's the very first thing that popped up let me share this with you uh let me see it. so if you can see this i'll show this right here so this article let me see if I can zoom in. Just read this initial. Uh, you see this right here? A 3% Fed target, Fed inflation target. Powell should stick to his promises. So this is as of today. So literally, I clicked on this. And then the first thing was the Fed thinks his job will be done at 2% inflation. So once again, they are bringing back the narrative of needing to address that particular number. So uh, definitely no coincidence. But <laughs> yeah. 3%. Anyway, so we'll keep it moving. But um, the UK, man, the UK is in a unique position, I think, because they appear to be leading the world in a different direction. And it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem to keep the narrative going if they, if they are able to. So the next article that you share with me was about stagflation in the UK. And so uh, I, I assume that the pinch is being felt by the consumer, the savers, and then the housing issue as well is going to be an issue. So I guess overall, right at this current moment, I'm assuming confidence is not there when it comes to people trusting the, uh, the, the, the government, nevertheless, the central bank as well, huh? Yeah, and I think uh, one of the reasons why we're not doing as well is because we signed up to, uh, uh, in 08, actually, to the Climate Change Act. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was passed, I think, the same week that Lehman Brothers collapsed. And I interviewed a, a former uh, MP, I think, mm -hmm. uh, last year he's now a, a lord <laughs> but he's still okay he's all right lord lily yeah. and he was on, one of the only five mps to vote against it oops Ru some rudy rudy's uh doing something funny must have said but, something you don't like <laughs> no yeah but there's 600 uh, odd mps and only five voted against the climate change act which said that they had to go to uh, carbon neutrality so mm -hmm. our economy, it doesn't matter what party is in, in, in charge. Right. Uh, we're going to suffer a lot because uh, we don't have the cheapest energy and they're trying to push us into this uh, green agenda. You know, uh, this week, uh, the mayor of London extended this uh, ultra low emission zone 
at, from uh, the middle of London to outside of London. So people, unless they have the right car, they have to mm -hmm. pay 12 pounds 50 a day just to drive out of their uh, houses. And it's going to hurt uh, people. So uh, they're deliberately trying to, uh, well, they don't think they're destroying the economy. They, they think they're uh, saving the environment and saving, you know, cleaning the air. But I, I think it's very misguided what they're going to do is uh, keep destroying the economy. And that's why we have stagflation. Yeah. Yeah. Stagflation is not just limited to the UK. It's happening globally. So I'm like, let me just look up and find out what the official definition of stagflation is, because everybody nowadays, they'd be changing, redefining words and everything in between. But it says stagflation is an economic cycle characterized by slow growth and a high unemployment rate accompanied by inflation. <laughs> so yeah. no growth and, and expansion of the monetary base, ultimately speaking. Yeah. And so it's just not limited to the UK just because it's happening here. Uh, so here's another little headline here that uh, came out today. It says increasing sense of doom. Manufacturing surveys uh, scream stagflation in July. And of course, the numbers are always adjusted. So yeah. uh, stagflation here in America as well, because we are in a recession. Well, here in the, official. UK, the, yeah, the official unemployment rate here is quite low, but mm -hmm. uh, they don't tell you that they've added hundreds of thousands of people to uh, like the disabled list where they get benefits, they're not counted as uh, unemployed. And uh, so uh, our unemployment rate is like something like 3.5, which doesn't really represent anything. And, and I yeah. think the same thing in the US, you know, the unemployment rate has ticked up today. Uh, it, it, it went up from 3.3 .3 to 3.8. But I would say that uh, that one also doesn't really give you the the good uh you know it doesn't give uh, you the the full picture because a lot of people that have given given up working they're not working anymore right uh and um yeah so and the uh the growth part as well in the uk i, I think our gdp <laughs> they just revised gdp uh, uh from 2021 the same yeah. people that have changed the history of cpi here so can mm -hmm. you really trust the numbers? It reminds me of the Soviet Union when they used to publish great numbers in the Soviet Union and all mm -hmm. of a sudden it, the Soviet Union collapsed. You know, it feels like that. And, and we've seen in the last week in, or two in the U.S. that a lot of the uh, non-farm payroll numbers, uh, I think that every month this year had been, you know, they the numbers beat expectations or something. Mm -hmm. But now they're all being revised down. And today's right. number was a little higher than expected. It was expected 170,000 came out like 187. Yeah. But then they revised the previous uh, week's number mm -hmm. from like 187 to 157. And no one's going to look at that. The, right, the, right. You don't. It's in the past. The headlines for the public is just going to be, oh, uh, uh, jobs uh, increased by more than expected and they not going to say that the previous month was revised mm -hmm. massively lower you know it's all and and that's a, that's to me that's clear evidence of how literally they can give us any number today because it's all about maintaining the current facade that everything is fine so that every friday they close out markets are in a green people feel good people can go into the weekend especially here with labor day weekend people can you know take the weekend off and go have fun not thinking about their their portfolios or nothing like that because everything is fine but then it's it's, it's, it's like a cyclical thing every month there's something new every something there's something new they give us these bogus numbers and they can give it to us until they can't anymore until something yeah. breaks <laughs> well i mean the stock market is not really doing much uh, you know, the Dow's up 30 points, NASDAQ is down 50, and the s and is unchanged. But yeah. I, I've noticed, you know, these didn't look like very good numbers for the economy. But one thing that is not good today, and, and of course, the average Joe uh, or Jane on the street is not going to be looking at that, but the 10-year yield is up 10 basis points, which is mm -hmm. quite big on a weak number we're back to 420. So uh, there's something wrong there. I, I'm not sure what it is. And yeah, um, yeah um, what else? Um, 
Yeah, what you're saying there about them giving you uh, giving the number that they they want right. <laughs> to manage the market. I think Jim Sinclair called it MOP, M O P E, Management mm -hmm. of Perception Economics, and mm -hmm. that's been happening for decades. Even yeah. during, I think that's something the the Clinton uh, administration learned. I think there was a Clinton official who said. Uh, if I uh, were able to come back, you know, in another uh, at another life, I I'd yeah. want to become come back as the bond market because bond markets are so powerful. So they 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 knew back then that they had to like uh, manage perceptions in the financial markets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. And also, I noticed in the comments, so it looks like, Mario, because you were, you were set to stream as well. So for whatever reason, people are saying it's not streaming on your side. So what we have to do is probably download this and upload it to your side because for whatever reason, it's not showing on your side. So perhaps deleting that first top post is what probably was a cause for this, oh, I assume. I but well, I don't know. But we'll I, I would just like uh, post it tomorrow on my channel. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, it, it's just that the last uh, the last few times we did the Mike and Mary show, I, I learned how to uh, uh, go live simultaneously with Mike. Yeah. And now I've forgotten yeah. uh, <laughs> because we haven't been on for a while. It's so, all good, but we're back in action. So let's keep it going. Let's get to some articles, more articles, more headlines, and then we'll get to some thoughts, questions. So hopefully you guys have a gang of topics and questions you guys want to touch on. But uh, Labor Day weekend, here we are. <laughs> gas prices. Labor Day weekend gas prices highest in over a decade. And so since this current administration has been in place, everybody's concerned about the price of everything. And of course, gas hits hard, unfortunately. But uh, it says, uh, as we hate to say it, but gas prices are up over 80% since Biden's uh, election. So not surprised whatsoever, but I'm assuming people are taking that into account as they're doing their holiday travel. Uh, this weekend, so we'll see. What are the gas prices like in the UK? You guys, I mean, are they? Yeah, they they've been ticking up. And uh, today, I went, uh, I drove by a gas station or a petrol station, and they mm -hmm. ticked down a little bit. But I I, I suspect they're going to be going up next week because as I look here at uh, crude oil WTI, it's up another two percent right now. It's at eighty five. And um, if I look at the British pound uh, versus the dollar, it's down uh, almost three quarters of a percent, which is quite big. So I expect uh, petrol or gas prices to keep going up here, too. And it's not yeah. going to help. Um, and and, and one, one thing I did notice in this article and brings back up is uh, one of the concerns I had initially was that uh, the current administration would not be refilling the strategic petroleum reserves. But according to this, it says um, President Biden is running out of options to stem the tide here are, as his administration has started to refill the uh, SPR in recent weeks. So this little chart here shows that uh, we uh, they drained it completely for the most part. But it's, it's ticking up slightly with a couple million barrels or whatever. But this little green circle here shows that they are putting forth effort <laughs> to refill the SBR. So uh, not sure what good it would do before the next you know market issues. But, you know, more power to it. So but uh, it is what it is. <laughs> All right. Let's keep it going. A couple more headlines. Then we get to some questions. And so I remember last time we did connect all eyes at the time were on the BRICS. And so the BRICS meeting has come and gone. They've added couple new nations starting January 1st. And I mentioned like, you know, the nations that they're, the, some of the nations that they strategically added, I think three of the Middle Eastern countries are heavy oil nations. And so I looked at it as like, okay, are they trying to corner the oil market as a phase one perhaps? And then perhaps later on down the line, you know, price that oil that they have in their little conglomerate in some form of a alternative currency. So we'll have to wait and see, but, but what are your thoughts on that? What's the chance that they literally try to everything coming from that region is pricing something other than USD for yeah, international trade? Yeah, I think uh, eventually they will try to maybe have their own uh, currency. But I think the uh, important thing right now is that uh, they're growing. BRICS is going to become 11 mm -hmm. and uh, they're going to. Yeah, they're a big chunk of the. Uh, 
world population. They have a lot of commodities. Uh, they do a lot of trade with China, uh, and that's increasing. And uh, I saw that uh, China is going to invest for the first time abroad in you won yeah. in, in, yeah. no argentina in argentina okay yeah yeah i saw that yeah. Yeah. so uh i think there's a lot of uh disdain and uh people play down the bricks they say that uh, they're useless that uh, they're never going to do anything together but I, i i think they do have a common um how can i say goal and the common mm-hmm. goal is to be less dependent on the west because right. the west right. is kind of uh, screwed the rest of the world for a few hundred years. And right. uh, of course, it's never easy to start a, a big group like this. I think even when they uh, started the Bretton Woods system, there were mm-hmm. uh, difference of opinions. I mean, if you remember in the 50s, uh, there was the Suez crisis when mm-hmm. uh, France and uh, the UK Uh, invaded uh, Egypt to stop mm-hmm. the Egyptians uh, nationalizing the Suez Canal. And, and yeah. the Americans actually uh, went against the British and said, if you don't stop this, we're going to pull the plug on the pound. So, yeah. you know, um, yeah, there will be problems. But I, I think the, uh, the takeaway from the BRICS is that they're going to expand Uh, they're going to be 11 by the 1st of January 2024. They could be, you know, uh, 20, 20 or 30. <laughs> uh, 20 or 25 by 2025. Who knows? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they're, they're definitely going to try to uh, trade with their own currencies. They're, they're try- going to, and that, all that means is that they're going to need less and less dollars or pounds or euros. Uh, or other uh, Western currencies. Right, right. And also, I think, you know, the, the whole BRICS formation is going to be chaotic at first, but then again, they have a common interest, as you mentioned, and it's basically de-dollarize their entire economies and come up with alternatives. But I think with the with, in comparison to Bretton Woods, you know, Bretton Woods w- was favorable at the time due to the, you know, a decade or two of war prior to wars prior to so it made it easier for a lot of nations to run to the table for that type of agreement just for the rebuilding process so i think if there happens to be another event god forbid similar to what happened with you know the world war series then it'll be easier for the bricks to come together on some common as well just because the rebuilding process will need to be paid for in something other than usd so i think it'll be easier for those guys to do that and then speaking of which um i want to show that little uh visual from uh, dan Popescu about uh, the BRICS. And this is, of course, what we from what we know. And of course, I'm assuming it's a lot more than that. But here's oh, the new yeah. BRICS uh, alignment and their c- current gold reserves as of July, according to uh, what Dan put out there. So, But it was a turning point, as it says here, the great financial crisis to where something broke <laughs> in the monetary system completely and everybody started running the gold officially. So you couldn't hide it anymore because this thing is literally spiking up like uh, the U.S. debt. <laughs> Or not, not as high yet, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. This and says a lot. Go ahead. The thing is, it says six thousand five hundred and six tons. Yeah. I mean, um, and there's speculation that Chinese have at least twenty thousand tons, mm-hmm. and the, the Russians as well have a lot more. So, yeah. and on the other side, uh, the United States hasn't done an uh, audit, independent audit of Fort Knox, mm-hmm. in I don't know how long. Right. Uh, so do they really have 8,300 tons unencumbered? It's difficult to say. No. no. I, and at this current moment, anybody who's watching this monetary restructuring unfold would be willing to say that the likelihood that there is 8,000 tons of gold in Fort Knox is not probable. It's just because the Western Hemisphere talks nothing about gold. And all the talk about gold is coming from the bricks and their, you know, yeah. their their side of the world. So yeah. they don't want nothing to do with gold because I, I don't saw, think nothing. I, I saw a clip on TikTok or Instagram of the, this guy, you know, uh, on the uh, floor of the New York Stock Exchange, mm-hmm. and uh, he said he was talking about bricks, and he said, "I I spoke to the guys here on the floor, and." Uh, They laughed at me when I said there was going to be a BRICS reserve currency, and, and they said, uh, 
the United States has twice as much gold as all the BRICs combined. You know, but I'm sorry, the guys on the New York Stock Exchange floor, they don't trade gold. They trade right. stocks and bonds. Um, and they, they, they have no, uh, no clue or idea, or idea, you know, but that's the kind of stuff you get. And, yeah. uh, I think a lot of people are going to be shocked. Uh, and, uh, it's not even a matter of them having their own reserve currency. It's a matter of them not using the dollar. That's going to like make the demand for dollars drop massively. Right. Right, right. I mean, that's the thing. The biggest thing with this whole de-dollarization process, you don't need to get rid of dollars just because the Western Empire is going to implode on itself. You just need alternatives. And so I think between currency swaps and, of course, the use of the yuan down to the, you know, the, down for the global south, it being an option itself is more than enough to let us know that things are shifting. And speaking of which, let's jump on uh, what's unfolding in, in China, man, because based upon all activity happening over there, a lack of activity, it looks like it's a 2008 in the making type of crises unfolding but it's been relatively contained thus far and so do you think based upon all the negative news we're getting out of china that the western hemisphere i.e the u.s and the federal reserve uh because they definitely would feel the re repercussions of whatever happens over there do you think the federal reserve would probably come in and help the chinese out as far as papering over some of their losses or or what because if, if they go down the domino's gonna fall over here mighty fast and do you think they want that right now um <laughs> no, I don't think uh, you know. I don't think the uh, the U.S. can help China mm -hmm. uh, because you know if, if there's a problem in China, is more domestic. Yeah. So, unless uh, the U.S. starts printing a renminbi, <laughs> which they can't. Uh, you know, China has loads of dollars, three trillion mm -hmm. in reserve. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think China will be okay. Um, I think what's happening in China, uh, according to uh, the Sirius report, is that they actually want to take the air out of bubbles mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, like Evergrande and other uh, real estate bubbles. And yeah. they've done it, you see, because they and, and us in the West, we've been used to seeing bailouts of everything, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, everything collapsed and they came and, and brought it back. Mm -hmm. uh, 2020, you know, even even the uh, in March this year, they did let some banks collapse, but they bailed out, you know, depositors uh, that had more than 250,000. Yeah. And it's ironic because we're told that uh, in the West, we have free markets in China, they're communists. But mm -hmm. I, I actually think they're they're more. Uh, they lean more towards free markets. So um, I don't think the, you know, I'm not saying the Chinese economy isn't doing well, but they're just taking, they're just um, slowing things down because they don't want it to get out of hand. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't think the U.S. can help. Uh, China can help the U.S. because China has uh, dollar reserves and uh, China has a surplus still with the U.S., but yeah. not the yeah. other way around. Yeah. Now, the reason I mentioned that is just because if something was to happen over there if it, and, and, and if it wasn't a strategically event occurring right now where they're letting some air out the bubble just to c get things like under control for whatever's to come. OK, yeah. cool. But if it wasn't that and if it wasn't a contagion event that happened to spray it, just like uh, whenever it was something happened to EU or whatever, created yeah. some type of special currency swap, you know, type of, you know, prop, yeah. you know, like emergency, emergency fault line, a prop up just so yeah. things don't get as bad. I don't know. It just seems that the uh, political uh, political uh, climate in the U.S. is to be very anti-China. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, every, you know, not not just on the left but the right. It's like yeah. C CCP this, CCP that. Even mm -hmm. though I, I saw the other day that Goldman they Sachs is working very closely with the Chinese government, they opened a private equity fund that was funded by the Chinese government partly. So yeah. who knows? <laughs> now watch this. They, they don't use the words or the letters CCP no more because that, you know, the communist side so they use People's Republic because they want to make it appear as if like, you know, the Chinese people have the same liberties and freedoms we have, even though they're in a surveillance state. But so they, they change the narrative on how they address that particular country in of itself. So, but then again, like we'll, we'll have to wait and see, but, um, but actually, anyway, it goes, it's not going to be pretty. It's actually, uh, CP 
CPC because it's actually the Communist Party of China. It's yeah. not even communist Chinese Communist Party. So, mm. okay, but, okay. I mean, the um, guy was the poster child for being anti-Chinese, and has been calling for a Chinese financial economic collapse for like the last five years. Is Kyle Bass, who I used yeah. to listen to and respect. Mm -hmm. But now he just seems to be a political mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I, I hear him every now and then. But whenever I hear him, he's, he's basically bashing anything to do with China. Mm. While you got the Ray, Dalio, the Ray Dalio's and the Larry Fink's, all those guys are, are rushing into China for yeah. development after all yeah. this stuff blows through. You know, uh, Blackstone, not Blackrock, Blackstone, mm -hmm. who's mm -hmm. run by Stephen Schwartzman. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they have a, a program that they fund at Oxford University in the UK. Mm -hmm. It's called the, uh, the Rhodes Scholarship for, for Chinese students. You know, there's right. a Rhodes Scholarship for American students. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Bill Clinton was a Rhodes Scholar. He came to study at Oxford. Mm -hmm. But they ha have a Rhodes Scholarship for Ch uh, communist Chinese students. And uh, uh, Blackstone finances it, and Oxford uh, runs it. So are they really our enemies? I mean, maybe it's just for public consumption. Right, but the right. people high up, they're still working with them. Right, right, right. And that's where I always go into that, you know, the, the good guy, bad guy narrative that we've been given. You know, the bricks are bad, the West, you know, Russia, Russia of course, Russia's been used as a scapegoat for now. And I, of course, Ukraine is still going on. And I think I hear more about it. Zelensky's using leverage now, trying to blackmail to Europe to give him more funds. And is you know, and we put seventy five billion into it and about to send some more. But they sent seven hundred dollars to the families of Maui. Yeah, it's yeah. You got a um, super chat there from. Chris. All right, let's uh, get to some questions in. So we got uh, Chris. Appreciate your message. Great to see you back on action again. Why is it, when is S and P going down? Great. Is going to downgrade U.S. government debt like Fitch did recently. You didn't. Uh, you didn't. There. You think their metrics are not much different than the other two? Wow. Which well, S and P downgraded the the U.S. back in 2011, <laughs> and, and their CEO was uh, had to resign. So, but it's possible they could. And I remember during that downgrade earlier in the decade there was a lot of pushback like you know from the first from the western government like you know basically with some threats and as you mentioned somebody got fired i haven't heard that now like you know like as far as just the the, the pushback from the government it's like they're running with it or rolling with it just because it doesn't matter at this point like you can downgrade us all you want because we're still going to print we still need deficits to fund everything and what are you going to do about it and then it's the people out here who's saying you know the dollar is not going nowhere the world needs our debt uh, what's his name? One of the guys on the All In, All In podcast. Um, he He's very like, no matter what, the U.S. has the reserve currency. We can run it into the ground because the world will always take our debt because the world is centered around debt. And I'm like, Ugh. I think that's wrong because they're moving away now. You know, the mm -hmm. Brits are moving away from it. Uh, and uh, I've got like, uh, I'm not sure I can share this with you, but uh, I got this from... Uh, Commodity Discovery Fund, I think it's the Dutch guy who wrote uh, The Great Reset. Mm -hmm. Willem Middelkamp. Middelkamp, yeah. Yeah, Middelkamp. Uh, and he's got a map of the world, of the planet, <laughs> mm -hmm. from 2000. And it has uh, countries which share great uh, greater trade with, and it's got a blue box for the U.S. and a red one for China. Yeah, in two thousand, most of the world was blue. Oh, you get, so you got a link? You got a link? You got a link? Yeah. Put it in the uh, thing or share share your screen. I'm curious to see it. Yeah, it's it's a screenshot, so uh, it's a okay. picture on my thing. So all right, never mind. Okay. But but the thing is, now in twenty twenty in twenty twenty, if you look at this map, the the whole world, with the exception of Canada, Mexico, and a few countries in Europe, it's all orange so if they're gonna be dealing with each other in their own currencies now with BRICS, why do they need u.s debt that's what i'm trying to say yeah 
It's called, uh, you might, if you might, let's see, if you Google it, it says, who are you going to call countries which share greater, which share greater trade? You, and if you do images, you might find it. Okay. And let me see here. Countries that share greater trade. Who are you going to call? If you do images, you might find it. Let me see what pops up here. Uh, United States. Okay, so let me see. Is this it here? Uh, is this it here? Yeah. No, no, that's not it. It's not it. No. Uh, let me go back here. World GDP. Let me go on. Let me go on Twitter. It might be on Twitter. Ugh. All right, well, we look for that weekend. Uh, let me see, but 30, we got uh, a couple articles here. Nothing major, nothing, yeah, but, nothing new, sh too shocking. But you want to get us some questions? Yeah, let's do some questions then. All right, let's, uh, let me see here. So for those who plugged in, uh, feel free, because it's been a while since we've connected with you guys. Curious to hear what you guys are keeping your eyes on or what are some topics that's worth bringing to the forefront Uh that we may not know about or may know about. And if you got want to share some thoughts on it, feel free to do that. So put out some, uh, um, put out some questions in the chat and let's see what we can um, see. What we can get going here. And now we'll see how, where it takes us. So highlight at RTD or whatever, sort of stand out. And then we can answer if we see anything. Uh, let me see here. <clears throat> Question uh, from UK financial prep uh, preparedness. Mario, are you aware that the UK national grid will pay us to stop using electricity on at least 12 separate occasions in winter 23? It's all conditioned for the incoming energy. Yeah, I, I think I saw an article like that a few uh, weeks ago. Um, yeah, but uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not looking to get paid <laughs> to not use energy. <laughs> yeah. Let me see here that link. Uh, let me see. Yeah, the link you sent me because that's a file on your PC. It won't let me. Um, All right. Won't let me look at it. Okay. Don't worry about it. We'll get it next time. Uh, so I'm looking at. Says so I'm looking at the ten year keeping over four low blood pressure. LBP, what's up, man? Yeah, the I'm ten year at... right now. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm surprised today that we are up ten basis points. Uh, LBP. Um, because the the jobs number were uh, not you know they're quite weak uh, hourly earnings as well didn't go up as much as people thought so I, I would have thought that the the bond market would have done well but uh, it, it's uh, weird because it's uh, the short end the short end didn't go up like the two year yield is up only like two basis points but the ten year is up ten. So um, um, maybe there's something there that I haven't seen, but uh, I, I think that's worrying for the bond market because I, I think the Treasury and the Fed are mm -hmm. desperate to keep it below 4.3. Yeah. Uh, another question here from Greg. It says, how will energy affect the housing to gold ratio? Mm. Housing to go ratio. That sounds like some uh, Mike Maloney type stuff. There, uh, I don't, I don't dive too deep yeah, into the housing I, to go ratio. <laughs> I spoke about it today. I, I follow it in the UK. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, if energy prices here in the UK keep going up, you know, the uh, CPI will stay elevated. Uh, Bank of England won't be able to cut rates. They might even have to raise it further. That will uh, make mortgage rates go higher. Mm -hmm. make house prices go down and i think that would uh yeah make the uh the house price to gold ratio go down as well i.e gold will continue to outperform mm. yeah so i'm assuming that just that'll happen you know globally so not just in the uk so uh question from yvette it says will biden announce on september 22 the crash of the dollar or will they let the snowball just continue to roll uh, September 22. What's happening on September 22? Don't what's know. <laughs> Yvette, what, exactly. What's happening on the, on the 22nd of this, of this month? I'm not know. familiar with any events. How do you know Biden is going to announce that? I don't know. Right. Yeah, so curious to find out what that's about. On the weekend. Here's Rudy, guys. 
Ah, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> gotta put Rudy on the mic. You, is it just you get her to speak or bark, or you gotta, you gotta give her some basic commands? Does bark, but you know, in, yeah. No. <laughs> Uh, let me see. Here's another one. It says, uh, "Would you, uh, would another round of lockdowns be inflationary or deflationary?" Mm. Well, I think initially they'd be deflationary. Mm -hmm. but if, they did, if they if they did uh, the same thing they did in the last lockdown, which was eventually to uh, pay everyone to stay at home, uh, mm -hmm. and after the fact, would be uh, inflationary. It would be inflationary later on. Yeah. And inside, there's there's talks of you know certain like California, the, the extremely liberal cities and states talking about preparing for this fall already. And yeah, it's so I would be surprised if there's pockets uh, throughout the country decide to do some craziness like that. Uh, Dion says, "Do you think there will be more bank closures?" Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. There's yeah, going to be bank issues yeah. until there's in the U.S. Yeah. Because there's about four and a half thousand banks in the U.S., so yeah, I'm sure there will be. Uh, and, yeah. Oh yeah, talking about that, Mike, is uh, the fact that Wall Street banks they're they're looking to issue like uh, billions in bonds, uh, which means they they think uh, that interest rates are still relatively low. And mm -hmm. why are they issuing bonds? Because they need the cash because they're losing deposits. So mm -hmm. that that shows that um, the the banking sector is in trouble. I, I think yeah. I saw an article about that. And speaking of which, uh, just that uh, emergency yeah. uh, fund that they put together uh, is continued to trend upward. You know, the, the BTFP hit another new all-time high this week, almost every week, and new all-time high for the banks. There's bailing out facilities. So, uh, so this right here shows that there's issues back there because they're continually taking out these so-called loans. Mm. Uh, that's supposed to expire next year, but we'll see. So yeah. there's definitely issues in the banking sector still. I like the way they use these acronyms. What's it's that? Basically BTFB. It's basically a bank bailout fund. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's just another another last minute emergency uh, facility created to prop things up. So I'm assuming they got a couple more under their belt. Um, there's something else, uh, says question, uh, lots of rumors of market crashing early oh, October. Low, low, loan low, payback. low brother mm -hmm. is asking, uh, about Newton, Isaac Newton. I think, uh, he set the, uh, gold to silver ratio around 15, 15 mm -hmm. to one. Uh, what else? Okay, lots of rumors about market crashing on early October student loans payback and the emergency uh, alert system being part of the issue. <sighs> I, I, I've heard about all those stories, but then yeah. once again... I mean, every year there's uh, people talk about a crash in October because it's the time of the year. <laughs> right. <laughs> they, are, they are like, uh, I think during the last lockdowns, they, uh, they uh, suspended... Uh, student loan payments but now mm -hmm. it's back on All right it's back on okay. officially soon yeah so they're project, predicting that that's going to be a reason why the housing market sell off on top of everything else and so yeah i guess we have to wait and see because at this current moment anything is possible man uh do you think that the price of gold will drop in its initial stages during the next financial collapse like it did in 2008 yes I think it's going to be a sell-off. I mean, a lot of people are going to dump all types of papers, paper, paper crap, which ultimately drive down the physical price as well, because that's how they measure it. That's how they create the spot price. And as a result of that, there'll be a dip. But then again, the premiums. Well, actually, uh, I'm not too sure about that one because really, this year in March, uh, was it March when we had the bank troubles? Mm -hmm. gold, gold went up from 1800. And then by the end of April, it was almost at 2100 in the middle of that banking crisis. So who knows? Yeah. You know, so things never, you know, people, I, I know that gold uh, dropped in um, 2008 from uh, 1,000 in March to just below 700 during the height of the Lehman crisis in September 08. So it yeah. dropped a thousand to like six eighty, but you couldn't get gold at uh, six eighty. You had to pay 
like a 10% premium. Mm-hmm. And then it turned around really quickly. And by 2011, it had like a tripled. So I think you just have to hold on and right. uh, not try to be cute, like sell it here and buy it back. Right. Or some, or maybe just buy some more if it does dip and mm-hmm. hold on. Right. Because, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know where it's going to go, where it has to go. Uh, here's a <laughs> something that's funny. It says, next facility the Fed should create should be called SHTF. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would be funny, boy. <laughs> um, here's something here. Credit card companies going to raise swipe rate despite uh, US, U.S. merchants paid an estimated $93 billion in Visa and MasterCard credit cards fear free last year just passed on to consumers. Uh, what can we do? So the swipe rate is that how much the uh, uh, the credit card company gets from the vendors? I assume so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, when I ran uh, the uh, pawnbroking shop back in 2012 to 2014, I had a a card machine, and I had to pay every month to Barclays, you know, uh, something just to rent the card machine. And then every time someone used a the card, they took a cut. Yeah. You know, uh, but, and I think that's wrong, you know, to make. And that's why I'm against uh, uh, businesses that don't take cash. There are some businesses in the UK yeah, who don't yeah. take cash. And I try to, like, uh, if I can, if I get there and they say we don't take cash, I just turn around and leave. Yeah. Yeah. And they're popping up here. Taco Bell's here and a couple other places are talking about doing that. So the question was, what can we do? And so instead of being a victim of the money manipulation game that they're using to charge you excess on top of whatever it is you purchase, dial back on using your credit card in that capacity. You know what I'm saying? Don't use it for the sake of just uh, consuming rather than boycott what? the shops that don't take cash. Yeah. Uh, low blood pressure says, uh, how do I get a fit account at the fair window? <laughs> Your credit card is all maxed out. Oh, uh, low blood pressure, you need to uh, become a, 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 a bank holding company. You could ask Goldman Sachs because they they allowed them to become a, a bank holding company over the weekend back in 08 when they were collapsing. So, <laughs> yeah, give uh, Goldman Sachs a call and say, you know, <laughs> Can you help me uh, to become a, a bank holding company? And then you can go to that discount window. <laughs> uh, uh, persistence over resistance. How are you doing? It says, what would happen if the BRICS nations sell off all their treasuries, sell off their treasuries, would the Fed have to buy them uh, back to save the markets? Yeah, they're the lender, yeah. purchaser, lifesaver of last resort. Yeah, I don't even think, though, that they're going to sell them. They're just not going <laughs> to buying as many and mm-hmm. uh, they're not going to because they're not going to be needing as many dollars and yeah. they're gonna not be uh, using as many. They're going to be getting paid less and less in dollars. So it's just I, I don't think they're there to disrupt the Treasury market. They're just doing because mm-hmm. they know if they try to gang up and go against the, the dollar like that, they could be in trouble uh, physically. Yeah, not they all do it together, can't because the U.S. can't attack the world directly. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. All right, so let's uh, let me see. Fifty minutes. Let's uh, look at. I see. Uh, what's the name? Put uh, buy silver and platinum. So I was looking at the prices. Action, real quick. Let me got to move you up a little bit here. But here's uh current silver activity. We got well, the gold figures here. Gold and silver were, did well right after the job data, but then they slammed it down as usual. So gold is now down about two dollars, and silver is down about twenty four cents. The spot price. Yeah. Nineteen sixty four. It came down quick. And then uh, what else we got here? Let me look at where I go. Uh, we got platinum here. So yeah, everything everything did a little. Uh, Platinum came down as well from a thousand. Uh, platinum is looking better. It's uh, it's uh, it's down, but it's approaching a uh, thousand again. And recently, we got below uh, nine hundred. Yeah, 
Uh, An all time high, 2100. Yeah. Back in 07. Then we got Palladium. <laughs> yeah, I also don't follow really Palladium too much. Yeah, other than just them being listed here. So, all right, well, we got uh, we're about 45 minutes. Uh, I think we did a good job of covering a good amount of subjects for this week for the first. Mike and Mario, I guess I call it season three, <laughs> season three, episode one. Um, but as always, everybody, it's great to connect with you guys. Hope you guys have a great Labor Day weekend for those here in the U.S. And for my people in the U.K., continue to uh, you know do what you do best. Stat, get your weight up, and uh, enjoy life while you still have it. So any last parting words of wisdom, Mario? Well, not really. Just, <laughs> just try to, like you said, just uh, maybe tune off from uh... – from things and uh, enjoy your life and do do what you can for for yourself, your family, you know, and not don't let things get you down. Yeah, yeah, I would second that. Second that. All right, good people. As always, be blessed, and I will see you guys later. Peace. <laughs>